All right, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about safety. So safety is the number one priority of this course. So we're gonna first look at the wind symbols. What do they mean? What do they stand for? And what hazards do they have? So let's look at the first one, A. A stands for compressed gas. And its hazard is that it can explode. So compressed gas means any under pressure, thus because of that, it can explode. B, B is what we call flammable. So these are things that can catch on fire easily. For C, we're looking at something that looks like flammable, but it's not. It stands for oxidizing material. So it looks like a flame with an O in it. And what this means is that it can supply oxygen in a fire. So what does that mean? Well, an object that has oxidizing materials on it will mean that when it burns, it also still can produce oxygen. And that fuels a fire because we know that a fire needs oxygen, a spark, and a fuel. So now, the next part of the WIMIS. So again, WIMIS stands for Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. D. D is poison. So these are objects that can, when you consume it, can kill you quickly. Well, E. E is also considered poison, but it's a lower grade we can call toxic. And what this is, is that it kills you over repeated exposure. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is poison would be something like rat poison. You consume it, it's a medical emergency. Toxic could be something like asbestos, in which it doesn't kill you right away, but with repeated exposure, it can kill you over time. F is biohazard. And what biohazard is, is that it can cause health issues such as disease. So these are objects that can spread diseases. G is corrosive, which means it can burn slash dissolve objects. So for example, an acid is corrosive. Lastly, H. H is not radioactive. A lot of students mistaken this is radioactive. This one stands for dangerously reactive. What this means is that these are things that can react violently. So an example is something like a bomb. So it could explode. So you cannot mistake in these symbols. Now, when you talk about these symbols, these are what we call the old Wim's symbols that came out in the 80s. In 2015, we actually changed these eight symbols to be two things. Number one, more modern. And number two, easier to understand. So what does that look like? Well, in 2015, these are the new symbols we have. So first of all, they're no longer in circles. They are now in diamonds. So this was our old previously dangerously reactive. Or, so in this case, instead, just be clear now, it's exploding bomb because that's what the majority of those are. It's reactive hazard. We notice that, for example, we have a new environment symbol. We also have toxic has split into two categories, health hazard, which means it may cause or suspect of causing serious health effects, and exclamation mark, which means it doesn't create as or cause as much serious health effects. Our bowel hazard doesn't change. So these are the new WIM symbols, and these are the ones you'll see after 2015. Well, we also have what we call the HHPS symbols, or more commonly known as the also the IHS, which stands for the International Hazard Symbols. And these are more universally known, because WIMIS is actually Canadian, while these symbols are used around the world. So what do they do? Well, HHPS, which stands for a household product symbol, 
what they do is that they are two things. Number one, they are simpler. There's less of them to talk about because we only have poison, corrosive, flammable, and explosive. At, in labs, we might have things that are, for example, oxidizing. We might have things that are exploding bomb. But at home, we actually don't have as much of those. So thus, we only have four symbols. The second thing is we have a severity of them in which an octagon is danger. A diamond is warning, and an upside eye triangle is caution. So how do we read these? Well, if you have one that's, for example, the skull and bone, which I'll try drawing my best, all right, this one would be read as warning, poison. And that's how you would read these symbols. So these are the safety symbols that we encounter on a daily basis. But what about the equipments? What kind of equipments do we have? And how do we use this equipment to be safe in the lab? Well, let's start off. Our first equipment is called fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher is used to put out large fires. It's usually a last resort. The next one is called a fire blanket. And this one is to put out smaller fires. So for example, if you are on fire, but it's only a little part of you, we could use a fire blanket to wrap you. For example, there's a fire on a lap bench, we could use a fire blanket to wrap you. Now if there's a larger fire, we, ha we should use a fire extinguisher. But the big thing here is not everyone can use this. You've got to be trained to use a fire extinguisher. The next equipment is called the eye wash station. And the eye wash station is very specific. It's that there are two types. There's one that looks like this, and there's one that's a bottle in which your eye fits into a socket and it's used to spray out any chemicals in it. Now what an eye wash station is, is to wash, to wash chemicals out of eye. But how long do you use it for? Use it for 15 to 30 minutes. The next one is called a emergency shower. This one is to wash chemicals off body. So not eye, but off body. The next one is called acid base neutralization kit, or a lot of people just call it a neutralization kit. And this one is used to neutralize an acid or a base, especially if it's spilt. We also have a few last. Um, equipment we have, for example, we also have a fume hood. A fume hood is used to conduct experiments to remove harmful fumes. So for example, if you had something that could, for example, burn your lungs, you would want this thing in the fume hood because what's going to happen is there's a vent up here and it's going to vent out of the room and whatever you do in here is going to vent out of the room instead of going into the room. We also have a glass bucket which is for disposing glass. We don't want to dispose glass um, into the garbage can because that can actually cut people when they are emptying out the, the garbage can. And last but not least, we have goggles. Goggles are for to be worn during the lab. So you got to be wearing goggles during the whole lab. It's to protect your eyes. So we still have a few scenarios to talk about. What happens and what do we do if this happens? So let's talk about our first scenario, chemical spill. A chemical spill can cause burns. So if that chemical is an acid, it can cause burns. How do we do that? Well, what we do is, first of all, hopefully it didn't get on your body. 
And if it did it, you got to notify teacher and step back because the teacher will be able to, to, um, to deal with it. Broken glass can cause cuts. What do you do? Well, you could sweep it up it into the glass bucket. Now, what if there's chemicals in that broken glass? In that case, we now treat it not as broken glass, we treat it as a chemical spill. If there's burning chemicals, that will cause burns. And that is just like a chemical spill. We gotta notify the teacher. If we have a fire and container, well, guess what? That will cause burns as well. But you, what you want to do in this case, if there's a fire in a container, that means now it can be contained. If that could be contained, what do you do? You want to put a lid on the container. Because what's going to happen is you get rid of one ingredient a fire needs, oxygen. If there's a fire in a lab bench, that can also cause burns. But in this case, use a fire blanket. Because there's no such thing as a lid for a lab bench. If there's uncontrolled fire, this can also cause burns. But in this case, you do two things. Number one, use fire extinguisher if you're trained. Number two, pull the fire alarm. That way, people who don't know can evacuate the building. So, we have a few other scenarios. What happens if you get a chemical on your hand? Well, if you get a chemical on hand, it can cause burns as well. In this case, chemical burns. So in this case, you want to wash off immediately. And if it's an acid, for example, and use neutralization kit. So you can neutralize that acid or base. If you're smelling chemicals, this can cause what we call nasal burns. And these nasal burns happen sometimes, for example, when you have a cold and your breathing causes it because it dries up. It feels like as if you burn your nasal. In this case, what do you want to do? You want to dilute the chemical so that it's not as potent. And the second thing is you want to use wafting technique. The last one is Bunsen burners. Bunsen burners can cause fires. In this case, how do you deal with it? Well, if a Bunsen burner is on fire, what do you do? You turn off main gas. That's the first step because what's going to happen is now you remove one of the fuels of the fire. What if the object's on fire? If the object's on fire because of the Bunsen burner, now we deal with it in this way. So if, for example, there is a burning chemical, we deal with it as if. if there's a fire on lap bench because of the Bunsen burner, we deal with putting a lid on it. If there's fire, uncontrolled fire, we use fire extinguisher. So that's how we deal it with Bunsen burner. All right, that's the end of our lesson. Make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.